Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the R. Kelly Appeal TV podcast, where we discuss topics that relate to the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly. The Brooklyn Appeal has nothing to really report at this time, and the upcoming Chicago trial is scheduled to begin in four days. Four days. Well, I went on the docket to find that August 10th, yesterday, there was an amend and correct motion filed. But I believe it is the correction of the motion to submit the, to the court in a correct way, the motion for the doctor to be an expert testimony witness and allow it to come in. Please hit the like button to get the latest update to the channel. Um, I will keep you posted as soon as that is downloaded and available to me. So let's talk about the number four. Four represents many different things. It represents stability, reliability, sturdiness, grounded, and productive. If you look at a chair, it has four legs. It's there to be sturdy and stable, to hold our weight balanced. That's what I look at when I think about the number four in Robert's case today. And that is what today should represent in the mindset when thinking about Robert. Four days until the scheduled Chicago trial. See, these are ways that we manifest in our lives. And as of this podcast recording, I'm going to tell you, I don't believe it will go forth as scheduled, but we shall see. The number four also represents the square that we reside in, that makes us who we are, and the freedom that comes with the ability to stand in that square and be empowered. It teaches us how to own our own power, meaning make your own interpretation of what freedom is to you. You know, many of us are incarcerated in our own dwelling, in our own $100,000 home. We're still incarcerated psychologically because we put ourselves there. So making your own interpretation of what freedom means to you, what culture means to you. Four represents cultural aspects of nature and how we appreciate our society to include forgiveness, nurturance, and among others, helping youth through direction. You know, we don't, as parents come with the blueprint on how to handle the specific personality we created through the act of sex. Robert is a product of that four square mentality. See, if we train up a child the best known way, when they're older, they're not gonna depart from the teaching because that's all they know. No matter what the environment brings to them as an observational test. So let's keep on believing what we know and also recognize how it's going down. Um, we need to recognize that we are made to be strong in what we manifest in our own personal practice. Tina Turner, the character of Tina Turner, when she, how abused she was, she got into her Buddhist meditation, she got into something, she found something. And many of us have lost faith in a lot of personal 
man-made religions. But there are many others. The last time I checked in my philosophy class, there were over 200,000 different sects of religion, spirituality available to the United States of America. However, religion and Christianity is the number one, um, how can I put it? It's the number one um, advertised, if you will, religion. And in that, there are a lot of misconceptions. There are a lot of mistreatments of the word itself. It has been tainted to be used for the purpose of self-gaining. You know, sometimes I look at the individuals who've I, who I've had personal experiences with that were part of a religious study that tried to control my thoughts, told me things in premonition that, as I said to them, hey, if God told me this, if God told you to tell me this, then guess what? God would have told me that someone's going to come to you and let you know that what you, what track you choose to be on in your world is about to be confirmed. Mm -mm, it don't work that way. In religion, religion says God gives the power to the man first, separate from you. And then that man comes and incorporates that into your life. That I find strange. When me and my higher power should have a relationship like a husband and wife. You know, and uh, in in a relationship, the very thing that holds the whole moral fabric of it together is what? Communication. So I'm going to get a download. I'm going to get a dream that comes. I'm going to get a, a feeling in my spirit that something is going to confirm something for me because I'm on the path to it. So to me, we are linked to spirituality is what I'm saying. This is a spiritual awakening and a journey that I've been on since 2011. It's not religion. I was born into religion. I had to learn the aspects of the people who were around and surrounding the knowledge. And they were the ones who made me feel the way that I feel about what I was taught. Now my teaching, I never steer away from. My teaching is always there and it's embedded in me. But the people, it reminds me of the Antoine Fisher story. When he first wakes up, well, when he, he has his dream, he's in his dream and then he wakes and then in this dream, he's the king, he's the little boy that walks through, meaning he was naive. He walks through all these people. And then all of a sudden, when he gets down there, he's eating like the king he should be. There's a gunshot. And that gunshot wakes him up from that dream. And that goes to subliminally tell us that all those people that are in that dream that you saw around Antoine were either ancestors or the physical beings that was going to teach him something. And once we finally get taught, and then it makes logistics to us, then we're able to say, wow, this is spirituality. It's not religion. And this is something that was taken from us at a very young age. During the time of slavery, it was taken from us. So, I want to say thank everyone for clicking on this podcast and taking the time to listen to what's being brought out here. When I get on this channel and I do my morning meditation conversations and discussions here with you guys, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I have a theme. 
But as I began to get involved in the in the uh, recording, downloads come and this is what takes place. So I'm seeing my spiritual growth through this trial and the information that's being shared and the way that I've always felt that the criminal justice system was so supposed to be there for all men equally, all women equally. So we'll just see, because what I have in my observational thought is nothing of what I feel in my heart about how a system should be. Just like in the sect of religion and the people, when I was at my weakest point in 2009 and I lost my mother, I recognized that when you went to the church, because my mother was the pillar, my stepfather was the pillar. They were first lady and pastor of our church. We had a small uh, fabric in the community, but everybody that was there meant something. Everyone there had their their perspectives and their part to play. But after they were gone and I went to seek out other counsel, other individuals, just like I know Robert did because he spoke about it. I noticed how these individuals ended up, like Robert said, when he went to the church, to the word church, it was all about putting them up front so he could get, so they could get accolade and they can get, you know, more members because if Robert was a part of the membership, oh, other people were going to follow. And we have to do our own work. We cannot build success off of the coattail or the backs of someone else. We have to do the work ourselves and we can't expect anyone to come along and say, I'm going to pull you up and give you this because the minute that they do is the minute that they require much from you. And before you know it, you are doing things that you have never thought about because it's been implemented in the relationship that says you need to do this. And I believe that's where Robert was among a lot of the people in his camp. Oh, do one thing illegal and now we blood brothers and we're going to keep this for life. And if you don't uh, always be here for me, then what's going to happen is I'm going to tell your deepest, darkest secrets. No one can get to you if they don't know how you function. But many of us are so broken, we don't even know how we function. Especially in the midst of chaos and adversity. So we go seek out and we reach out. That's what I did. You have lots of uh, conversations with your neighbor. And you never expect your neighbor to be the very ones to poison you. Either with, with, with information that's un, untrue or with beliefs based upon gossip or with straight out trying to kill you with poison. But I say to you this, even in that situation, there must be forgiveness. It took years for me to finally forgive the person that did this to me. That one night of trusting a neighbor cost me 13, 14 years of my life almost. But forgiveness is the key of staying in your square and recognizing that everything that happens in your life, even at the worst moment, Robert, even at the worst moment is for your good because this situation caused me to realize that I got to go within. That's how you manifest. You go within. You don't go outside seeking someone else's uh, aspects of your, what should I do? Your counsel. You know, you got to be very, very careful who you surround yourself with. And I was told that at the beginning of my journey, especially my business journey, there was a seminar that I had done. And it was amazing because Chase Bank 
was one of my sponsors. They came out, they supported the project, big project. And they said to me that we must surround ourselves with people who are going to be of like minds, that are going to allow us to grow, that are going to allow us to make our mistakes, but be there to support us. That's what support is really about. That's that chair. When you sit down on a chair and those four uh, legs are supposed to support you. So, yeah, there's a lot that goes on in, in realizing cultural freedom. There's a lot that goes with it. But when you wake up and you're aware that this has happened to you and you've been under a subliminal sleep state and you awaken, craziness is going to happen around you because you've been asleep and you have not been aware. But then you wake up and you say, wait a minute now, you got this case of this famous person with hardly any evidence and you got three uh, code or well, you got three people in the whole case and you have all this, all this chaos in it. And when there's chaos there, there is no balance. Everything is out of sync. Everything is out of balance. So you can manifest easier there to begin to organize what's going on. And that's where we are here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. We're at that point of organization. So for today, I want you to walk through your day recognizing that Robert is balancing himself. He's in there recreating his character, his personality. And God gives second chances all the time. There are people who never thought that they would walk out of the institution of correction. But they do and they're stronger, they're wiser because they were weak in a subliminal state. When we're all sheep, we're following. See, I don't believe in followers. As Reverend Ike says, I believe in leaders. Lead your own life, even as a young person. Because guess what? Even as a youth, these kids do whatever they want to do, whether it's behind our backs or in our faces. They're already understanding. They come to the planet knowing, even with the cries that they cry, the manipulated cries, that they are their own leaders. The only thing they need us to do is make sure they get what they want. <laughs> but they know what they want, even as babies. Look at the pandemic babies. Watch them as they move. So that's what I wanted to come on and share and hopefully provide some insight and support to the R. Kelly Appeal TV supporters. And just to let you know that we have to be culturally free in order to help anyone manifest something that we believe in. Because to do that means that we bring all of our thoughts, good or bad, into the equation. So just keep our thoughts positive, both in our own lives and in the support process of Robert Sylvester Kelly. And watch how God unfolds this to the point where we'll be like, and that's how it ends. That's how it should be. No weapon form would have ever prospered. But we got to know that and we can't waver from that. You know, we can't waver. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. As always, keep it 100 and we will see you next time.